everyone, this is another Freedom to Feel conversation and my guest today, once again, the lovely Jocelyn Ranucci. She's an author, guide, and businesswoman. She's the author of From Childhood to Christhood, A Journey into Universal Divine Consciousness. That's the title of her book that we have been talking about for a while now. Audio interviews and then another video interview before this one. This will be part two of sharing her beautiful work and message, which is a spiritual one, very close to my heart, as I always say to her and everybody else I meet. But the topic, specific topic is the bridge between spiritual growth and everyday life, which is a fascinating one because a lot of times we don't know how to integrate spiritual practices, knowledge, or wisdom into day-to-day living, especially relationships, I have to say. So before we get into the topic, I have a few questions that I didn't ask you last time, Jocelyn. It was, um, we had the conversation about the greater truth, and I didn't ask you a few questions that I would love to today. But before that, for those who don't know you, how would you describe yourself? Who is Jocelyn as of this moment? Well, I, you know, I, I don't even know what to say. I, 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 I'm just a person that... Uh, was given certain uh, uh, challenges in my life, right. and uh, I uh, affronted them. I would say I did, you know, one by one. And so now, you know, I am in the third chapter of my life, yeah. and uh, will probably be the final chapter of this life anyway. And uh, I can say that, uh, you know, I am at peace. With, with myself, with the world, mm. uh, and uh, and I want to share some some of it, you know, hopefully uh, helping somebody find their own peace, maybe, and that's about it, you know. Yes, uh, what's not to love about that? The exploration of inner truth, finding out how to overcome challenges, which has been my case too, and so many people out there, and then writing the book and then putting out there and then now sharing the message. I always say that spirituality is what we need the most in this world we live in, in this reality called the physical reality. We do need spirituality. I can't help it, but think that's the foundation, that's the basis of a life that's worth living. I even have to say it that way. So do you feel the same way, Jocelyn? Uh, Because, you know, a lot of people prioritize wellness and health and other things, but I think spirituality comes first. Well, I think spirituality is, uh, is very important, but it also, you know, the degree in which you're going to involve yourself in uh, spirituality, in fi- finding your, uh, yourself uh, and all of that, depends also your condition of your life, right. you know. So, but in the end, you know, it all goes back to the same thing of knowing who you are and, you know, to your spirit and spirituality. Mm. So um, I just think that uh, I agree with you that it's, it's, it's important because it's true understanding uh, spirituality or learning that you get an understanding of who you are and then you can uh, change yourself and uh, you know as I say become your best self at every moment that's all you can ask for yes. uh, but for that yeah and 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 because also when you enter the world of spirituality of learning you know that will change your uh, your action how you act you know, uh, in this world. So, yeah, it's, it's, in my opinion, too, it's very important. But the body is important, too. You know, um, the emotion are important. Everything is important. It's just a matter how you, you look at it mm-hmm. and you adapt yeah. it to, to, to your life or to life in general. Right, right. Yes, that's exactly what I mean by spirituality, what you said about getting to know yourself going deeper into your own truth 
meaning the body, the emotions, the thoughts, everything. Yeah. It's almost like this, um, this adventure, I have yeah. the inner world exploration. Yes, I, I will share with you, I think I, I write that in the book, that when I was in my 20s, when I got a sense of what spirituality uh, was and, you know, I got involved. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that changed for me was how I addressed my body because at the time I did not uh, take care of, I was 20, I was beautiful, you know, it was okay, okay. but I did not really take care of the way I ate over that and I hardly ate any vegetable. I was a meat and potato person. And when I entered the, 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 the spirit, if you want, and I start my search, right. uh, my body went, well, no, you got to change now. And, you know, I was kind of geared to eating vegetable, to changing. So it, it's, it may sound a little bit silly and childish what I'm saying, but your body is part of it too. Mm, yes. You know, it's part of the journey, how you, you deal with your body. Yes, right. Some say it's the vessel, right? It's the, uh, the tool through which we explore this reality and see everything. So, of course, yes, yeah. I know we'll tap into the topic of the bridge between spiritual growth and everyday life, but is that the main message, would you say, Jocelyn, kind of um, living spiritual growth through the everyday life, yes. kind of integrating body, mind, and yes. Yes. feelings? Yes, I think that's very important because... We are on Earth, we are having an earthy experience. So yes. we, we need to address our spirituality and we are through that um, uh, vehicle, if you want. So for me, in a way, you know, everybody is different, but for me, that is the main yeah. uh, 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 goal and, and the most important thing is to live your spirituality, understand yourself, and live it through your human experience. You know? Ah. Hey, that's one of the questions, you know, that I didn't ask you last time, the guided questions. How do we know when we are living our truth? Like, what are the signs? What would you say? Well, they are many signs. But, you know... Uh, <laughs> when you are living your truth, life is easier for you. You know, like, I don't know, not everybody is the same, but like, you know, a lot of us is what I said before, we kind of running after life. Ooh, and sometimes uh. we lose, uh, we, we can't catch our breath because we're always running after life. But when you enter into your, um, into your own world and you are at peace and, and, and it's like life leads you, you follow the life, you know? Yes. And so you, you find a certain peace. It is not perfect. Uh, a lot of things are going to happen to you and you still, uh, sometimes you start, sometimes you're upset, but it does not stick really, you know? It's like you, you, you are in a flow of something. Mm. And so, you know, the flow, yes. I think the flow is a good word for that. Yes. You know, there's somebody that I will be, that I'm working with now, Adrian Emery. He's from Australia. And he wrote a whole book about that, the flow. It's, I think it's called the Tao Tuni, the art of flow. Uh -huh. So it's all about that. I mean, and he goes back again and again and again about sovereignty, being true to you always. That's what he kind of, the message keeps repeating itself in different way. It goes back, like the main pillar for growing spiritually is addressing your truth. It's living, it's being what you hear to be. It's kind of listening to everything that's happened within yourself and kind of following the signs. And he calls that the flow. So I know it's not an easy thing to do, but I want to also go back to something that the flow, I don't want to forget that, but something that you said, you know, within the, the passage that has to do with this topic of the bridge between spiritual growth and everyday life, you say little by little, we find inner and outer peace and we live life rather than fighting it. Yeah, that's just what I, yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you right now. You know, it's like a, of running after life or fight life, you know, yes. because of wanting something or whatever, you just, 
with it. Right. So in a way, Jocelyn, is uh, spiritual practices, if they are true, but if they are real, they will address letting go. It's more actually about letting it be kind of not fighting, not resisting to anything than the opposite, than acquiring more knowledge or trying so hard to meditate or to be in a certain way? Well, yes, but you have to achieve to get to that place where you are able to let it be. Yeah. You know, how are you going to get there? You know, so... I think it's a mixture of everything and it, it depends, you know, you, you need to find the, the knowledge. You need to uh, re, re, uh, awaken, awaken the knowledge that you already have, that you forgot, because when we are born, we forget everything. We have like the veil of forgetness. Yeah. We don't yeah. know exactly why we're here. We don't, we forget. Even, you know, when, when you, uh, listen to the story of a great spiritual master, like, you know, Jesus or Buddha, even Buddha, he forgot. It's, it's like when they say, what is that? No, that's not correct. I have to find out the truth. Right. And he did, you know. So everybody, we we come, we forget, we have to awaken that truth that we have uh, within us. There is a, a, a process. So you need to, f it's like, you need to find ways to reawaken that truth, that knowledge. Right. And that doesn't come like at once, you know. And so it's through that process that, yes, you need to learn to let go. You need to learn, you know, and all of that happened little by little by little, depending on how much you're willing and able to, to work at it, to go towards it, you know. Some people, they go a little bit and then they stop. You know, they don't go deeper. Yes. So it depends. It depends. Talk to me about that. Because for some people who don't really know what that truth is, I call them fundamental truth, like timeless truth. So that we have forgotten, you said. So what is that that we have forgotten? And why are we afraid of it, some of us, and we let go? I think we, we forgot who we are, where we come from, you know, we, f we forgot if, if, if actually we are reincarnated and reincarnated and right we forgot a past life, you know. Some people say, okay, I'm going to visit my past life and, you know, I was this one, I was this one, but yeah. we did forget. But all of that, all this information is, is in us, you know. Uh, as I say, I call it my spiritual DNA, you know, you've got all of that. And so you have to reacquaint yourself with all of that, yeah. you know. So then you find out, uh, but still, it's still very, um, you find out what you decide to believe that it's true to you, but that's all that matters, you know, in the end. Yes. For me, it's just very natural since I was very little. It's very clear to me that I was not here for the first time it was something that was, that this, whatever this is. It was eternal, was always, is, never dies, really. So is that what are you referring to when you talk about past lives? That means the true us, what we are really, not who. It's something that never dies, that's eternal. Uh, well, you know, if, if uh, the so-called spirit, you know, yeah. the, the soul and the spirit, that what we believe is eternal, uh, you know, when... When I was young, I did not believe I was eternal. And now I, I don't really know that I am eternal. But, I, you know, I, that's, yeah. that's what it feels right to me. Me, Jocelyn, is not eternal, obviously. But, you know, the essence of who I am is eternal. If only, if you think about it, you know, if we all come from that same creative energy, this universal creative energy, then we have to be eternal, at least as long as this energy exists, because we are the same. So we, we cannot disappear, because if we all disappear, then it's all gone, right? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So, but you see, to think like that is is nice, and you have a lot of very deep spiritual teaching, and and all of that is is, is very very good. But I think at first, the most important is how you apply that to yourself and to life and to your behavior. That is the most important. Whether I am eternal or not eternal, whether I, in the end of the day, for today, you know, what we is it, it, not important. It's important, but it's not. It's like, you know, sometimes I hear people say, oh, you know, we are inside the spirit or the spirit is inside. Who cares? We, we are spirit. We are energy. Whether I'm inside the spirit or, or the spirit is inside of me, in the end, it's the same thing. It's what the individual feel more comfortable to believe, you know? And so you have uh, the people say, okay, you know, we... What we are experiencing is not real; it's just a dream. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. it's just an experience the spirit decide to 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 have. Well, that's very nice, and it it might be true. Maybe I'm just a projection, and I'm looking at my life on TV. You know, all of that. It, it, I'm not saying you know it's probably not right, and all of that. But does it help you? on the day-to-day life? Does it help you when you are sad? Does it help you when you don't know what to do with yourself? You see? Mm, yeah. So that's, for me, it's important to go back to, to, to who you are, each individual. How do you feel? How do you react? How can you change that? How can you be a better person, better understanding? You know, because that's the way life change and if life change for you life change for people around you and then you know you can multiply mm. so yeah i would say that changed well for me it changed everything and at the same time it didn't as you know it just my life stayed the same my body and everything but it, from the perception level it changed everything i can't see i, I cannot unsee that it's just so much different now the way I see life. Do you see that? Do you that does it make sense to you this idea that knowledge can change also our our experience? Yes, defi- de- definitely. Yes, if you if you for instance in your case, you know, uh, to understand, to feel, to believe that you were eternal, as you say remove all the fear you you had yeah. because it was a, a deep rooted understanding but it was not in, in in my opinion i don't think it was something new for you this is something that let's hypothetically know this is something that you had already maybe in previous lives and a plural okay yes reach a level that had brought you to that understanding so that in your case, once the, the memory was triggered, you went right back to that level because you already had reached that understanding. Right. That's what I think, you know. And so right away, it helped you find your place within those spheres and all of that. Okay, but that's why, you know, once you ask me, why don't you teach? I don't want to tell people what to do because we all different. And in my opinion, you know, what you experience is your experience, but you you cannot teach this to somebody else because somebody else is not going to have done the same journey. Eventually, probably we do all the same journey, but maybe not at the same time. So I think when I really believe that when you have a, a realization, is not something that you just learning now. It's something that you knew, and and so now you're going to use that probably at a different level because obviously you are back here on Earth, so you you are here to learn something else yeah. or whatever it is, or maybe just to do what you're doing and spread the message. So every time you kind of build up. So, you know, in a sense, you don't learn the truth, you recognize the truth. You remember it. Yes, that's it. The idea that we um, that we just go through 
lifetimes kind of to learn these things and realize, you know, the truth and then express it and then kind of live it. It seems like we have a lot of evidence for that from what I see in our past life. The mind continuation evidence with the out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, there are so many evidence for that. Almost we can deny in a way, right? No, I, I agree. But, you know, some people still don't believe it. Right. So, you know, everybody has, has uh, you know, mm. they have the right to believe what they believe. And this life, they, they don't believe in it. Maybe they come back and they change. Maybe they don't need to believe in it this life because for whatever reason. Mm. So that's fascinating what you just said. It's, a, it's an interesting insight about not all of us are walking the same path. Not all of us will become aware or realize the truth at the same time. No. So are you implying that that's the reason why we don't live in this peaceful, you know, beautiful reality right now? Maybe, yes, because we, we are at, at, at different levels. So that's why, you know, I think to come back to, to the beginning, right. that, that, that the spiritual uh, awareness uh, of each individual is important because then it grows and as it grows, it, it changes the, the mass consciousness or whatever you want to call it. And as that shift, the world can shift, you know. Mm. But uh, and and maybe on Earth it'll never really happen. Maybe we just here, and maybe there is another Earth somewhere where it's a little bit, uh, you know, more advanced. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and see how much is evident now with people being so apart in their belief, in, in their, uh, what they want, you know? So yeah, they, 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 they're not, uh, we're not, right. we're walking the same path, but not at the same pace. Right. Do you feel like once we tap into this knowledge, realization, belief, which I have a question for you about belief systems too. So once we know that fundamental truth, don't you think it would help? Like you said, we just kind of uh, go out there and by sharing, by speaking about these things, is that possible that somebody could all of a sudden shift and kind of remember the truth? If they want to, they will. They have to go within. You still have to stop and, and, and say, I want to know the truth. Yes. You know, it, it, it's, and if they want to, yes. So you're also saying in a way that those who have realized the truth, they can do whatever they want with it. It's not something that you have to go out there and let other people know. You can just kind of keep it to yourself. The idea is to teach by example. And so, you know, if we, if we stay in the, in the idea and the spirit that we are energy, okay? Yeah. So somebody... And so maybe sometimes, you know, is it, it, not a spiritual master. It's just somebody trying to find their truth and, and, and be, you know, real uh, about themselves. So then um, the energy they're going to release is going to be more harmonious, more balanced, yeah. you know. And, and that's, that's all you can do, to spread that nice energy around you in the best way you, you, you can. You do, nobody needs to be a teacher. Nobody needs to write a book. That's, that's very nice. And, and also, you know, you need to be con not concerned, but like, you know, um, aware yeah. of a lot of people that what do they use their spirituality for? You, sh you know, just to, to make money, to, you know, what is really their intention? You know, some people may have beautiful intention and some not so much. So you, you need to be very aware okay. of, of all of that. You know, don't, don't just, yeah. uh, you know, get everything that's thrown at you and accept it uh, as true. No, you have to be careful. Use discernment, you know. That, that, that's why, you know, the, the journey within, if, if you learn, from your spirit, from your higher self, from God within, 
whatever it is you you uh, relate to that force within you, you are only going to learn what you need to learn yeah. and what you are ready to learn. Because who knows you better than yourself? You know what I'm saying? So the, the, this is, you know, what, whatever you realize within a meditation or, or, you know, or just maybe you read the book and something say, oh my God, that resonates so true to me. It's got to be true. Yeah. Then this is the real thing for you because it's your higher self that are, is giving you that information, you know. So, so you need to be very careful who your teacher is. Mm. Ah. So we become our own guide, yes, yes. Right. by paying attention, by listening. You are your, you. your, your, yourself, your spirit, you are yourself, is your best teacher, is your best doctor, is your best friend. Yes. You know? And it's, sometimes it's your best mother or your best father because that's where you get the love from. Yeah, beautiful message. An empowering one for all of us, right? Because we tend, I notice that when I am in doubt, I know when I'm in doubt because I start asking other people, oh, you know, what do you think about this? Should I do this? That's when I know that there's some doubt in here. It's probably the reason, now I'm getting more the feeling that the more I am in doubt or the more something's not meant for me, the more I go outside and I ask other people, what do you think about this? Should I do this? Should I do that? So now I know. I mean, is that the way? Am I in, in the right direction here, Jocelyn? Well, yes, yes and no, because you're, we are all one spirit too. So your spirit is going to talk to you through many uh, months. Yes. You know, might be on television. Oh my God. Yes, I understand now. It could be a book. It could be a friend. It could be a conversation you overhear. So if you have that, you know, you ask your friend, you ask advice, you just, you ask and then you process. Yes. You just don't take the first advice and say, okay, I'm going to do that. And until, but you know, you may, you may get the message from somebody you ask and say, oh my God, you know, you're right. And then, and then when it feels good here, there is no pull, no thing. Then most of the time that would be you going in the right direction. Right. You know, and many times we don't do that and, you know, we pay for it. But in the other end, whatever direction we take, it's always the right direction because it, it's always the direction that's going to help you uh, know yourself and face yourself. It's just that, you know, if you make the wrong turn, it's going to take longer and it's going might be more difficult. But in the end, you're always going toward uh, knowing yourself and toward self-awareness. If that's the path you want to take, if you had, uh, make a, a deal with your spirit, you know, I want to take that path. Once you make that deal, Fasten your seatbelt, <laughs> <laughs> because no matter what, you're going to go ahead. <laughs> so there's no wrong way, really. No. Well, you know, I'm sure you you have t everybody in life took a, a wrong turn. Like, you know, you had that little feeling saying, don't do that, don't do that. But your mind was going, do that, do that. And you oh, did yeah. it. And then, oh, okay. <laughs> we all went there, right? We all did that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a lot of times I thought it was following my intuition. And that's another ah, question, I think. Yeah, the intuition. I thought it was my intuition that I was following, and then it wasn't. So how do we know the difference? That's one of the questions. The voice of the ego, the spirit, and intuition. It's, it's, it's hard. You don't really know, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, because yeah. sometimes maybe you have to follow your ego, in order to learn something. So, you know, actually your intuition is going to guide you the wrong way in order to take you <laughs> yes. to the right way and all of that, you know? So in the end, you, you don't really know. Sometimes you just have to do things and then you find out. And then, as I say, in the end, it's never the wrong, the wrong move because, you know, your spirit is only going to, to Amazing. guide you toward your goal. It's, you know, how, how easy you're going to make it or how difficult you're going to make it. 
most of us, we make it difficult, you know. <laughs> but that's when we go back to what you were saying, you know, like once you know that you are spirit, when you know that, uh, you know, when you have a certain understanding about that, you are not that body and you don't have to have all what you think you have, then it's easier because you don't get attached, you know? Right. Is, is what I said. To, 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 to flow with a life doesn't mean that you're not going to have some hardship, doesn't mean that uh, you're not going to have some sadness or whatever, but it's the way you're going to deal with it is going to be different because you're not going to be attached to it. You're going to know, okay, yeah. It's going to pass. I'm going to go through that and it's going to pass. You know, like before you, you, you become, you become the pain, you become the hardship, you know, and then you fight it, you fight it. That's gone. No more fight. Mm, that's it. You see, that's a powerful message too. Yeah, not resisting, not fighting, which has to do with fear. That means we are afraid of ourselves in a way. So I love the way you are. Um, you see, it's almost like um, there's no gap, right, Jocelyn, between the spirit and the ego, the intuition and anything else. So the mind, body, spirit, it's one. It's not something that they are not separate. No, I, I think so, except, you know, we we live in a world of separation in somehow, you yeah. know, so we, we, we sometimes it's easier to, to see them separate, but in the end, even the, the, the body, the mind, the heart, it's, it's, it's one. It's one, right. you know. But I think it's good sometimes, say, okay, I deal with my body, okay, I deal with my mind, I deal with my heart because it's, it's, no, it's too much. And then when, when, when you, you know, after a while, you say, okay, my, my mind, my heart, my body, my spirit, now right. we are one. One unity going at it, working towards Yes. And that's what you mean when you talk about this bridge between the spiritual growth and everyday life. It's closing that gap. Yes. Yes. And so then, you know, so then it's like life is going to always make sure you have what, what you want. And even in the little, yeah. the little mat, because, you know, life it's 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 on the day to day little thing, you know. Is find the parking, uh, find the, the shoes. I mean, you know, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm being a mm. bit silly now, but but it is true. You know what makes your life difficult sometimes? It's all the the, the little thing, and uh, then of course we can talk about relationship and all that. But but then you know, life. As I say, life is going to open open itself to you. Yeah. You know, and what you need is going to come to you. Sometimes, maybe not the way you think, but it, it'll come to you, you know. So then a lot of stress, you don't have so much stress. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. 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 Yeah, I love the passage. You talked about purification. You use that word. In your book, you say, as we progress with our purification, the positive nature of our actions has a rippling effect on every aspect of our lives, and we are blessed by divine intervention whenever needed, as you said. Well, for me, for me, uh, you know, most of us, at least me, for sure, I had a, a lot of uh, uh, wrong belief false belief about myself, about life, yeah, I had you know, yeah. and uh, I did a lot of wrong thing. You know, I had, I, my thoughts were not always nice or my word, you know, because everything matters. So, for instance, when you speak, is not only what you say, is how you say it, uh, you know, what you are saying, how you think. And what the thought be behind that, you know, yes, and so yes. that that is to become self-aware of 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 your of your uh, process of your data uh, how you react, and all of that needs to be purified because in order to go to the core, 
you need to get rid of everything that's suffocating the core. And all of those false beliefs, those uh, those uh, uh, negative emotion, negative uh, thought, and all of that, they they they, they suffocate yeah. our our core, our spirit. So you need to remove and clean and clean and clean so the light comes out. And so, you know, you can think the light comes out or the light comes in, does not matter. This, and so as, as you, you, you clean yourself, you know, of all of that, the lights come out. And what does the light do? It illuminates something else that you need to purify. And then it, 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 it put light on something else and on something else, and on something else, yeah. you know? And so that's the, the process, and little by little, you purify your being, and, and you get closer and closer and closer to, your, to yourself, to your true self, you know? And then, yeah. and then I don't know, we see. You. <laughs> but, but so, and every time you do that, life gets a little bit better for you. I usually put healing and spirituality together. Like I use that a lot. My whole platform is about healing and spirituality, healing and spirituality, especially emotional healing. So purification has to do with that. So you're speaking of blockages, right? Anything that's in the way. Yes, all the blockage. And we all have blockage, a lot of blockage, you know. So you have to crumble the blockage, break the barrier, cut the wrong, you know, yes. you get to, and you know, you almost need to visualize it. You know, say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm th that feeling, that hatred, that resentment, I, I purify it, you know. And so you will, it, it, and it works. Try it, it works, you know. And then all of a sudden that resentment you had is gone. It's gone ne because it left your consciousness. It's not there anymore. So because it's not there, it's not going to create more negative energy, you know, so it's uh, it, it's and it just never ends. It does. All right, maybe it ends, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Think, I don't think it ends when you are here. After when you you pass on the other side, I don't know. You know, but uh, I think as long as you are here, you you have a, some sort of process. You know. Right. And uh, if if what they say is true that uh, you are only a, a dream, uh, you know, only a projection of an experience that your spirit wants to live, well then, let's uh, let's tell your spirit to create a nice experience. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Amazing. When you started uh, to talk about purification, you mentioned a phrase. You said, "And I did some wrong things in my life," and you used that that term wrong, the word wrong, but I love the way you said it before. You said it's actually not the wrong way, but the longer way to truth or the longer way yeah. path to God. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, because you see, when I say I did the wrong thing, it, it's not really true. I, I don't did not do the wrong thing because at the time I did not know better. Right. You know? So even, even like emotion. Okay, so... You know, let's say that uh, uh, you have a lot of resentment and anger and all of that. And so I say, well, you know, that's wrong because those, but it's not really wrong. It's not the right word because right. that's, that's what you have and that's what you need to, to deal with. So it, it cannot be different until you address it. So nothing, you know, when you think about it, nothing is wrong. It, it's just where you are at the moment. Right. You see, that message is one that resonates with me, like, to the core. That's really, I'm a student of Vedanta, as you know, Advaita Vedanta. And that's exactly, although they do, because it's a religion, so they do talk a lot about spiritual practices, you know, the idea that if you do, because the law of this life, this physical reality is cause and effect. So let's say if I drink something that's not good for the body, of course something will happen, right? The body will respond to it and I'll get sick and all that. So it's cause and effect. We can't really run or escape that law. It's a law from this reality, nature, the natural world. How do you see this idea of fear? Because one is kind of unblocking all these 
the trauma from the past and all the imp negative imprints in the body mind, which we, the way we have been brought up, is, of course, we would have them. So one is doing that, but how do we kind of stop this fear, you know, this useless fear of not doing certain things? I don't want to eat this food because it's bad. I don't want to talk about this because it's bad. I don't want to even hear about this because it's not good. You know, we are afraid of so many things. Well, sometimes fear is good, you know, because, uh, yeah. uh, you know, maybe about eating something, maybe it's good you fear to eat <laughs> bad meat because it can kill you, <laughs> you know. So I, 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 I would not uh, call it uh, uh, fear. The thing sometimes we fear because we have a lot of, uh, so fear can be good. You, you have to understand, you know, uh, some, if, sometimes it can save your life because you're not going to do something and that, that, that was good. Mm. But, you know, we are fearful because society puts that in our mind, you know, you, you, you put the TV on and most of the advertisement is from one sickness or another. So then, of course, you fear, say, oh, my God, I'm going to get sick. And you know, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of fear is, is brought in by society, you know. Uh, they, they, That's true. And so they are not real. And, and then, you know, then you have the emotional fear that you, you fear you're not good enough. You, 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 you fear you're not going to achieve anything. You, you, you fear that uh, your met is, is not, uh, is not uh, faithful to you, or all kind of fear. And so we always go back that you need to go within and find your core, because once you find your core, Mm. And the closest you are to it, your core, your spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, then the less you fear because there is nothing to fear. You, you know what I'm saying? So whatever subject we go to and we, it always, to me, it always go back to the essential. Right. Go back within and find your core, find who you are and express it in the best possible way for you and, and, and your world. Yes. It, so that's one that, of course, because in my mind, it's already trained to kind of look at this reality in this way, love, peace, wisdom, anything. It's almost as if I'm looking from the spiritual mind. The, the mind has trained to become more spiritualized. So I love those concepts. I'm very attracted to them, per se. Something in me is attracted to them. But then the other side is that I know that consciousness, God, is already pure. So there's no need to do anything, to be concerned of anything, to tr like you said, to try to help anybody or do this and that in the hope that something better will come, that we'll be happier someday, or all that. So it's, it sounds like a paradox in a way, but it's really not, right, Jocelyn? And we are just kind of, if this is a dreamlike reality, we are just making the best dream we can make out of it. But it's not that we have to, and it's not that we are judging people who don't. Well, hopefully not, but you know... <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, to to get the to be the level of being uh, non-judgmental, that's uh, that's uh, difficult because uh, you know we tend to judge other people. But then you know when when you are when you if 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 you in order not to be judgmental of other, you have to be judge, non judgmental of yourself, and that's really difficult. You know, so again you know, go within always, it goes back to you. Right. And the moment you are able to love yourself in your, in your, um, uh, completely in your wholeness, then of course you're going to do that with other, but un until you do that, you are going to be judgmental. Yeah. You know, you are going to love or love a half or, you know, whatever we call love. It's uh, not always love. It's, it's a big word. 
So to me, we always go back to the beginning. We yeah. always go back to the beginning, you know, and, 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 and observe yourself, observe your relationship, you know, you be observant and then learn and adjust, you know. I kind of um, like that idea as a concept that we are already predestined to something here. It makes sense. Like I could, I don't think I could become, let's say, a pilot. That's something I never thought about in my life. I don't like heights and where I come from with my background for this body mind, the background here. I could never even think about becoming a pilot. So if I did it one of these days, thought, oh, maybe I can just, oh, I'm going to learn how to, that would, that would be very fresh. I wouldn't say strange, you know, I can't judge that, but it would be very different to, it's almost like I can feel it that there's a destiny happening here. That's something that I can't really stop. But because I love the idea too of healing spirituality, that's why I keep doing these things, this podcast, these conversations, the books that I write, the people that I meet, what it's all about that. So it's, it feels like a destiny to me. Do you have that feeling too, that you're just kind of um, flowing already with life as life itself? I think that everybody destiny at some level is the same. Uh, everybody destiny is to know thyself. Who said that? Jesus, right? Know thyself. That's our destiny. How are we going to get there? That's your individuality. Then you have your persona, your personality. We all have a different personality and that's going to affect how we reach our destiny. Yeah. And I don't think, except, except for that, you know, that we need to find ourselves, I don't think the rest is written really. We can change it. We can, you know, we change it. We can... Sometimes, you know, we are like the painter in front of the white canvas and we can paint it differently, you know. That's, that's the journey. Right. That's the, the journey. Right. Now, you know, like some people, they, they're born with uh, in, ingrained talent, you know. And uh, so I think that probably part of your uh, past, part of your spiritual DNA, whatever you acquire and maybe in past life, mm. you know, you can... Yeah apply more now in that life, you know, like, uh, so maybe you, uh, you have no, you never fly a plane before, so you have no desire, but maybe this life say, oh, why don't I go and fly a plane? That sounds like fun. And your spirit is like, yeah, why not? Well, why not? Because uh, I'm afraid of height. <laughs> so, so they say, oh, well, then we have to deal with the fear. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, right. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and, 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 and one thing, you know, also something about uh, spirituality. People, people should not take themselves so seriously. You know what I'm saying? It's like, enjoy life. Enjoy life, you know? Enjoy the moment. And when you learn something, be excited and, and embrace it. But have fun, you know? Mm. Have fun with your life, uh, you know? Yes, yeah. You see, I said that to you in the beginning of this conversation before we recorded. I love how spontaneous you are. I just interviewed somebody recently that his website's called, you know, his whole work is about his spontaneous presence you know, being in the moment, being true to what is true to you and just kind of flowing with it, flowing with life with the moment by moment, you know, just being spontaneous. That's how I feel about you. There's something in you that's so spontaneous, you know, it just, it's here and it's doing what it's supposed to do in this moment. But it's, there's a lot of wisdom, spiritual wisdom there. That you even said you're not even aware of it, which is interesting too, to me. <laughs> That's how much we know that Vedanta is right when they say we can't find a self, you know, the centered self. We are life itself. We are God itself. So there's no really separation between you and God. Yes, but remember, it's very nice to say that and true or not true, whatever. Uh -huh. But how do you behave 
in your life because I have known people who believe that, who say that, who meditate to that, and then, you know, yes. they treat people maybe not in a very loving way. Or, you know what I'm saying? So how do you apply that to your life? Because if not, the value is minimized. Yes. So is 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 it's one thing to have that understanding, that awareness that we are one. How do you apply it to life? And and the way you're going to apply it to life is in the in the manner you're going to go within and know yourself and be observant. Take the time. Take the time to live. Yes. Take the time to be. Take the time to reflect. Look. Reflect. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. You know, you, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot you have to do. Not just believe, oh, we are one and uh, God is with me. I'm within God. That's very good. That's very good. But on earth is not enough. Mm, oh, I see. Especially in society, we live in communities, right? So we don't want it to just kind of, oh, you know, that's, yeah, I absolutely get the point. But I think that that's the difference between a belief system, believing something and knowing something, realizing something, as you said beautifully. I love the word realizing because not something that we did know. We do know that. We just goes back. We realize something that's already here. Yeah. Then you forget about it. It's forget about it. That's just, that's just who you are. I think that's the difference, Jocelyn, between a belief system when people, you know, there's a lot of people who say that. I believe that we are one. You see, they even use the word believe. And I think belief, they are not really, they're not solid as we know. They can change and, you know, they fluctuate in intensity. One day, I believe a little less, a little more. So, but knowing and realizing something is completely different. Is what I think even in my, in my book, I, I say something like that. I say, you know, once you go within and... You, you don't believe in God anymore, you know God. Mm, so yeah. people say, what do you mean you know God? Well, you know, it means you, you know it, it's in your belly, it's in your heart, it's physical, it's in your cell. You just know it. Yeah. And that's it. And then you don't need to think about it anymore. It's there. It's there forever. Yeah, that's it. There's something that I think it, it was in Vedanta, somebody said, I think it is probably Vedanta, no... Knowing yourself is to know God. Know yourself and you know God. Yes, because we always go back to the same. If we all come from that same energy, mm. we have a little piece of God. And so, you know, it's all, it's all the same. But you cannot go and say, well, I am God. I have the truth. I know <laughs> yeah. everything. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it, it's like this is a, a, a lot of... Uh, of uh, spiritual master have said that or maybe one and I don't know who it is I don't know but that's not going to come from me they say you know we, we are like the the the, the ocean and the, and the drop of uh, one drop of water of the ocean right yes. so yeah. we are one drop of water so we are not the full of sh ocean but without each drop there is no ocean right so, so that's, a, I always thought that was a very beautiful um, vis visualization. And, and so that's, that's what we are. We are not God, <laughs> you know, but we are a little piece of it, tiny, tiny, tiny. Right, right. And without, and so we are, we are part of it all. Everything, everything is part of it. The computer I'm talking to you now on, the water, the sun, everything is part of it. Yes, that's it. Uh, what a beautiful way of ending the conversation too, right? The whole is in the parts and the parts in the whole. So you can't separate the whole from the parts. They're, they're just one. But you can't believe you are the whole either. <laughs> you know? yes. That would be the, 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 the person at the ego. The, the, ego believe, the ego believe is everything. No, no, he's not everything. <laughs> yes. Do you know that Buddha, he, he was in a flow. Once he realized the truth, he was in the flow. So he was not afraid of anything. There's no fear yeah. anymore. So he's not even thinking fear. There's no mind, that mind was not there anymore. 
So he ate everything that people gave it to him. So he was not really mm -hmm. interested in choosing anything anymore. There's no choosing. So people would come and give him food. He would eat whatever you gave to him. It could be meat, mm -hmm. whatever. He's not trying to be a vegetarian, being right, being correct, or anything like that. And somebody gave him something a, a rotten, something, a, you know, a food that was not good. I think it was pork, actually. And he died from it. I don't know if you knew about that, but that's how he died. No, I did not know about that. I did not know. Yeah, that's how Buddha died. I don't forget that when it comes to fear, I always go back to that, to his life, the way he died too. So he ate that food that somebody gave it to him because he was not choosing, he was not there to choose anything, and then he died from it. And I think Jesus too, it might be a good, he might be, of course he is a beautiful example of that, of giving, you know, the body, mind to, uh, you know, to this, to letting go of that and just um, knowing that he, was one with God, so he was not really concerned about the body anymore, or suffering, or losing the body the way he did. Yeah, well, but you know, maybe at, at the end, his spirit took over and removed the pain from the body, but yeah. still, you know, to, to think that he did not suffer, I don't know that it's very true. When I was in Israel last year, we went to a place, uh, don't ask me, I forgot the name, but uh, it was supposed to be the, the cell where Jesus uh, spent the night before, you know, uh, yeah. they, they took him with the cross and all of that. And so it was a cell, you know, and uh, there were some hook, like I don't know if, he, if, if they meant that he was, uh, uh, you know, attached to the hook, hook, something like that. Yeah. And, you know, I was there and imagine this man, you know, I think, I think to, he was suffering. I think it was hard. You know, he, he maybe he agreed to, to do that. I, we don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think he suffered. Now, I think that once he was in the cross, hopefully, you know, the spirit took over and, uh, mm. he, you know, he, he was not suffering anymore. But um, I remember looking at that cell and, Feeling the pain, you know? Yes. Yeah, and for Buddha, I, I don't know, maybe he figured, you know, I'm done. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably, too. <laughs> you know? Uh, nah, nah. I, 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 we don't know, but, you know, in the end, they had, they, he had a body, too, and, you know. When, when I, I went to Laos, and uh, in Laos, the monk, you know, uh, I don't know, at two or three in the morning, I forgot the time, but during the night, um, they all come out with a little bowl huh. and the people of the of the town, of the village, they, they put food, you know, they put food uh, and, and they, they work, all of them, and, and people put food. And so I went and I, you know, I did the same, you, you buy rice and yeah. Yeah. whatever I forgot, you know. And I'm thinking, my God, you know, they, they, they go with the bowl and people, you don't know how clean their hands are, you know, and they just put that food like that and all mixed up food. And that's what they eat every day, every day, every day, every day, you know. Right. And so I don't know if it's very hygienic, to be honest, but, you know, they, they, they live like that and they survive. So the body also adapts, you know. The body maybe adapts, and uh, it's an experience. Yeah. People don't talk about death that much, uh, but you see that most of us are living in a way that it's pretty clear that we're afraid to die. You know, the supplements we take, we work out, we try to sleep right, we do this and that, we clean ourselves. So it seems like we always, which is natural, I understand Especially if we tap into the mind, you know, the mind that's connected to the body, survival mechanism, it, it's really can take over, actually. As you know, it has taken over. We are people now living for the body and for the mind and protecting them emotionally and physically. So there's a lot of protection going on, a lot of fighting. And I, I just wonder if, you know, we lost all that and we are just kind of, um, I mean, we can't lose completely, but if we lose a nap enough, you know, to just flow with it, and even if we lose the body, it's okay. Because we know we never die. We know we are spiritual beings. Yeah, but you, you don't want to... Right now, you are in a body, you yes. know? So 
first the, the body doesn't want to die. The body is having a good time. <laughs> I don't want to die. You know, nobody wants to. You know, there is a difference between be afraid of dying and wanting to die. You know, like some people, yeah. <laughs> they get yes. to a point where they want to die. They say, you know, I'm done. I, I, I want to die. And that's okay too, you know. But I think it's good to take care of your body. That doesn't mean you, you want to, to live as long as you have to live and hopefully to live well, mm. you know. And and when you think your journey is com completed, then maybe subconsciously or at some level, you maybe you say, okay, now uh, it's time to go. And, you know, maybe like Buddha, you, you eat something bad and then say, oh, my God, you know, she eats that and she died. Yes. You know, we, we don't know the mystery of that. I, I think it's um, it's it, it it's sad in a way that uh, we don't talk about death because it is it, not, you know, it's not final. It's like I see a friend where we don't know what happened. Maybe it's a lot of fun. Once we go over, we have a lot of fun. Yes. I think it would be nice if uh, there was this approach a bit lighter about, dying you know and people would not be afraid to, to die because it's you know it, it, of course it can be scary because your ego your your personality all of that they don't want to die they the i you know the the me not the i of i am but the me of me you don't want to die you know uh, valeria uh, or Jocelyn, Jocelyn doesn't want to die, you know. Now my spirit might know that. Don't worry about it; you'll come back, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but Jocelyn's like, "Well, no, I'm enjoying," uh, you know. So I think it would be nice if there was a, a different approach uh, to it, because in the end, we we all die. But I think as long as we are in the body, uh, hopefully, you know, the most uh, healthy we can remain, you know, then it's. Uh, it's very good, you know, and because the body is part of the experience. Especially if we don't know the truth yet, we are not, have not realized, right, that we are one with life itself, you know, finding that truth that we talked about, the greater truth. Yeah, but you know, like you have people, uh, they, they don't have this belief, but they believe in God and, and, and yeah. they believe that after death, they're going to go to paradise and... Uh, uh, and they're going to see their husband or their uncle or whoever they, they lost along the way. Right. You know, th those are different uh, uh, beliefs, but they have value to them. And and so, to some people that also uh, take the fear of death away because, That's true. you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to die now and they're going to meet all the loved ones and all of that. Now, whether that is true or not, I don't know. Nobody knows exactly what happened. But um, so, you know. Right. But that, the underlying knowing there is that they never die. If they think that their loved ones who passed before, they're still somewhere here, so that they have that, that knowing, I don't die. You know, at some level, most people do believe on some sort of, after. some people know, but most people do. Uh, because uh, if you think about it. Yeah. To sustain us on life, we need to believe in something, you know. Uh, it, it might not be what you believe, might not be what I believe or whatever, but we need to believe in something because if not, like, what are we doing? Why are we here? Well, yeah. You know. So and it helps us and, you know, um, but, you know, I'm not ready to die. I tell you that much. Ah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. Yes, Justin, I feel the same way. Yeah, no fear of that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm very, I, I, I hope I can stay uh, as long as possible. And, you know, let's see. Yeah, that's really, to me, the that's the essential truth. When you know that, then all fear, fears dissolve and you just give yourself back to life or back to God. So you just, you know, you're always there anyway. And that's what you call true perfection. You see, in the, the passage that you sent to me, it talked a lot about the road to perfection, manifesting true perfection. To me, if there is something called perfection, then it will be that, that state, knowing that you are one with God. It's almost like being held by a mother. She never really let you go. It's always there. 
You know, I kind of forgot uh, in what uh, context I, I say that. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. I think perfection, you know, it's a big word. Uh, you know, what, what is perfection? Again, I, I don't remember the context or all, all of that. So maybe, uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't know that we are meant to reach perfection. I, I think we are meant to, as I say, to reach, to be the best we can do in the moment and then you know because then yeah you can go deeper into the spirituality and and uh, you know as you say learn about oneness learn about light learn about energy and all of that you know because that's beautiful and to understand that and believe in that help you mm. again help you go within and become your own self it, it, to me, it always come back to that. No matter which way I look, it always come back to that. But you know, on the other hand, I'm very excited when I, I learn somebody new, some not somebody, something new. Yeah. You know, like remember when I told you that what I find fascinating now is that science is meeting, you know, spirituality. Like physics is meeting metaphysics, and they start to have, you know, proof. That's fascinating. Yeah, you know that's fascinating. When when you 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 study mythology or or, 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 or Egypt, or, you know it's fascinating. All those things, all of that is beautiful and fascinating. But in the end, you still have to go with it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what you're talking exactly. What you're alluring to. So true perfection has to do with the alignment with the greater power of knowing oneself. So you, the message was exactly that. So you, you always speaking about the same thing. It's interesting, like the message, what you have experienced it yourself. And then from that truth, you just pass it on. It just goes back to that because it's something that you know, it's not something that you believe. That's it. That's it for me. That That's it. Which is wonderful. Yeah. You know, that, that's my message. And and I know I told you before it's not particularly the message people want to hear because they want to hear that do A B C and you're going to be yeah you know wonderful no it's to me it's not true that's my message and you know now that's I say the message and people maybe uh, put a little C D or little C D there but that's is what you say I know that for sure yes 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 a billion times. Oh, God, Jocelyn, I would talk to you forever, as you know. And that's the reason why I love these conversations with you, exactly for that reason, because it resonates with my heart. It's very clear to me that you know. Something here knows. I don't know how, but I mean, we, you said beautifully, we all know anyway. We just have to remember, have to realize it. It's so true. And what you said about science, yes, one of the things that science have like for age now in ways it's not new it's very it's basic that everything's interconnected there's no separation no and and they can prove it now they can prove it isn't that exciting i think it's super exciting yeah you know oh gosh jocelyn we're gonna talk about your second book in the next time we meet because you're writing a new book i know do you have the yes. working title well you know it's what i told you i was hesitating and and now uh, it's the same title, except the, the subtitle is uh, Further into the Journey. Right. I mean, you know, things can change. These things can change. But right now, and, and uh, so, it, because the message is the same. It's just from a different point of view right. and maybe with a little bit more uh, a personal uh, experience that I did not share in the first book. Right. Wonderful. So let me know when this is out. Of course, we'll be having a conversation about it probably. So I'll leave it at that. Your website is jranucci.com. So I'll have that in the podcast in the notes, in the video notes, Instagram at Jocelyn Renucci author. That's another one. I'll have everything there ready for everyone. It's clickable. So thank you so much again for your presence and we'll talk soon. We'll definitely be in touch again. Bye for okay, now. Okay. Bye Valeria. Bye-bye. Thank you.